and we're on and we're on let's call the Andover City Council meeting to order of June 11th I should say start with the roll call to my left Caroline Hale council member Troy Tabor council member Ben Lawrence mayor Clark C.R. Nelson council member Greg Schneider council member Mike Warrington council member Mike Keller police chief Donna Davis chief financial officer Chad Russell fire chief Jennifer McCausland assistant city administrator Andrew Kovar in for JT Class City Attorney. Les Mangus, Director of Public Works. Susan Renner, City Clerk. Mark Detter, City Administrator. All right, item three is invocation. I see Mr. Tuggle, Brad Tuggle here from Grace First Church. Thank you for joining us. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you for such a beautiful day. We see your power and your creation each day. We're so thankful for this community and for what it means to us. Thankful for those who defend it and protect it and for those who legislate within it, who make it safe for all of us. We pray a blessing on tonight's proceedings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you stand with us for the Pledge of Allegiance? Item number five this evening is the public forum. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak? Susan, raise your hand. Come. Yes, come on up. What brings you to our humble palace? I don't have an opportunity often to be here. I'm Susan Humphreys, a representative, state representative for Andover. And because we're mostly in Topeka on Tuesdays up until uh, the end of May. So I'm just here to thank you all for your service and just see what's going on in Andover and just be part of it. So thank you so much for doing this and what you do and, and having me tonight. Indeed. You're always welcome. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Seeing none, I will move on to acceptance of the agenda. I believe we have maybe a couple modifications, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I, first of all, I would like to uh, table uh, Section 7.1. I understand that the uh, Jaguars golf team will be with us uh, at a meeting in the future. And secondly, I request uh, an executive session uh, for preliminary discussion relating to the acquisition of real property and would like to add uh, such a, an executive session at the conclusion of our meeting or whatever is pro appropriate. After um, item 17 then? After number 17. Okay. Second. All right, uh, we have a motion by CR and a second by Troy to modify the acceptance of this agenda by tabling item 7.1 and adding an executive session uh, following agenda item 17. Uh, for the acquisition of real property. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I remember 17, uh, 7, we do have some presentations this evening. Uh, we, of course, would uh, uh, table 7.1, so we'll move on to 7.2 uh, concerning the uh, end of Central High School Lady Jaguars track team. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to recognize the Andover Central women's track team and, their, and specifically the 4x400 relay team for winning the 5A state championship and further recognize the team, uh, the track team's coaching staff and the young women for bringing such a positive attention to the Andover community. Second. All right. We have a motion by Mike and a second by Caroline. Um, Got to say, you know, we just started doing this very recently and I think it's uh, it's appropriate to recognize all the greatness and uh, athletics that, that we have in this community so we're really proud of all of y'all and uh, we wish you congratulations and let's uh, let's vote on this motion any further discussion 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Are members of that team here this evening? Yes, How many I, do we have? I think our, the co uh, Coach Weeby is here with the, the team. Uh, if he wouldn't mind coming up and just speaking a little bit about their accomplishment and introducing your uh, relay team there. That would be awesome. Yes, thank you for uh, doing this. This is a really neat thing for the girls, and, and they get to be recognized for all their hard work. Um, here present with us tonight um, are uh, Brittany Harshaw and uh, Kinsley Auctioner was not able to make it tonight. She had to work. Um, Hannah Wiebe. Sure. And Peyton Vinci. Uh, they won the uh, state uh, meet 4x4 four four at the state meet this year, and uh, we're just really uh, pleased with all they've done, and, and uh, they helped us out on a lot of other events as well and qualified in some other events, so um, that was a really great way to end our season. Thank you. Coach, if you and your... We will move on to item 7.3, uh, Ender Trojans, my alma mater, I might say. Um, we have some track champions here, is that correct? Yes. Yes, and the coach is, step on up, introduce your guys. Did you want to make a motion at some point? We will. My name is Justin Hill. I'm the uh, distance track coach at Andover High, as well as the cross country coach. And I've got four members of the 4x8 team. Um, they were the state champions in 5A. Uh, we broke, in addition to being a state champions, we also broke a 20 year record at, at school. Previous record was 8.03, and these guys ran eight flat wow. um, at the state meet, which was also the fastest 4x8 of all classes that day. So. Uh, huge accomplishment to be able to have four guys that can run about a two-minute half mile. Yeah. So, um, also among these individuals, um, on the far right, we have Asher Moen. He's a senior, and he wasn't content with just one school record, so he went after a school record in the 3,200 as well um, the day before and also broke a school record in that. So he was state champion in the 3,200 and... Uh, <laughs> And the four by eight. And the irony is that he broke his brother's record of two years ago. So wanted to get his brother's name off, off the board there. So, uh, so that's Asher Moen. And then next to him, we have Ryan Canan, who's a junior. Uh, that day, he also ran the 1600 and broke the school record with a 420. Um, also, again, breaking Asher's older brother. So... Um, <laughs> He was a little disappointed that he didn't have his name up there anymore. But uh, uh, then we have J a senior, Josh Jackson. And on the far right, uh, far left, I should say, Samuel McDavid is a sophomore. Hmm. And he ran the 800 and was second in the 800 and also broke the school record with a 157. So we had four school <laughs> records smoking, wow. and two first yeah. place and two runner up. So um, wow. huge accomplishment, their hard work and dedication. A lot of these guys started in the summer, well into cross country season, maybe take a couple weeks off and then they get going again for track season, whether they were swimming in the winter for conditioning or getting ready for track season. So um, it's an all year dedication and they've done a great job. So thank you guys for recognizing uh, their hard work. Let's, uh, let's entertain a motion on that. Okay. 
All right, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to honor the Andover track, um, uh, Trojan track, track team, and specifically the 4x8, uh, 5A men's state champion relay team, and Ashton Mowen, the 5A champion in the 3200, and further recognize the uh, Trojan track team coaching staff for the accomplishments and these athletes for bringing such a positive attention to the entire Andover community. Second. All right, we have a motion by Mike and a second by Caroline. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll be right. Let's get a picture. to item number eight, which is the consent agenda. That's items 8.1 through 8.10. Mr. Mayor, I would move to approve the consent agenda items uh, as presented. Second. That'd be 8.1 through 8.10 inclusive. Uh, motion by CR, second by Greg to approve the consent agenda as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine. Boy, we have an annexation petition in front of us. This 75-acre parcel is north of 21st Street and east of Andover Road across the, the street, essentially from the Cornerstone subdivision. It is adjacent to the city limits on its west border. And... It has sanitary sewer across the street. It is served by rural water district number five. The staff and the planning commission have reviewed the annexation and would recommend that the track be annexed. And the city can provide all the necessary utilities and police and fire and so forth? Yes, it's adjacent to the existing city limits. The, Water would come from rural water district number five. I see. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to accept the planning commission's recommendations and approve the annexation of the subject property as presented. Second. A motion by Troy and second by Caroline to accept the planning commission's recommendation and approve the annexation of the subject property as presented. Further discussion. I just want to make sure this is at the request of the owner. Is that correct? Correct. The owner has petitioned. Thank you. Those, those are the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Further discussion? I got a question. On when we have property like this that comes into the city and the rural water district is servicing that, we don't take over that water eventually, do we? No, rural water district is its own separate governing entity. Okay. There's, a, there's a little history involved in that. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day when we were accepting uh, voluntary petitions for annexation and building subdivisions, um, for a while we actually did that. Um, we, we made an offer and compromise to buy out the rural water districts, specifically one and sometimes five, buy out their um, investment in servicing water there and then we did provide water um, it's actually city of Wichita water but um, that all came to a screeching halt um, probably 2000 right before the Prairie Creek edition so that's 2008 six six five. six or five um, and the rural water districts um, 
uh, they start suing municipalities for taking over their water districts. It's, it's a little convoluted, but there are some state statutes, uh, or federal statutes, I should say, that do protect the area of rural water districts um, because their loans for their infrastructure um, are backed by the federal government. And so they actually use that territory as collateral, so to speak, for that. So it's a, there's multiple instances of this that has happened thousandfold across the nation, and all of a sudden it was like, so we do have some areas that we had bought out their investment in rural water districts, but anything going forward since 2008, um, no, the, the rural water district um, has the right to service that property, and, so and they've so chosen to do it. We're going we're gonna to run into this a lot more when the city expands. Right. And when we... You will. Are, yeah, okay. Mr. Mayor, do we, do we have a possibility of a problem with the ones that we didn't buy out? They could come back and claim... I don't know. We have agreements with what was Rural Water District 8, which is essentially south of Kellogg, that as we annex territory that the city can provide public water through the Wichita Water Department without compensation to the Rural wa Water District. Hmm. Will that stand up in court? That's a, that's a good question for a judge. They, that particular district hasn't challenged anything yet. But it's now one and the same. Right. Mr. Rural Mayor. Water District 5, who is north of Kellogg, assumed Rural Water District 8, south of Kellogg. So it's all one, one district with one board. But they have different agreements with the city of Andover. Okay. Gotta look forward to it. Yeah. Further discussion? I, I'm kind of late on it, but this land tract, is that just to the north of the cemetery then? It's actually south of the cemetery. It's south of the cemetery. So I'm, okay, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at where 21st Street is, and isn't this whole thing yes, if you, going north? If, if you... Which, uh, is it the red outline when we're talking about, right? Correct. So the, the cemetery, so the cemetery is, is that little cutout. The, correct. Oh, okay, I thought the cemetery was that gray one below. So the Andover, what I'm wondering is the actual city limits now. This will extend the city limits in that portion, correct? And that will now be our northern boundary? Yes, but it would be notched around the cemetery. Right, okay. So over on the other side, which is Cornerstone, that yellow line is the northern boundary on that side of Correct. Uh, Andover Road. Okay. Correct. So the cemetery is just county property and will stay that way and will remain. If something happens beyond that, it would just kind of be a little cookie cutout thing there. Probably. Correct. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion by Troy and a second by Caroline. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Let's move on to item number 10, um, which we have a rezoning case here. Uh, that's Z2019-05. Uh, it's a change of the zoning district classification from the present aggregate 40 uh, to the single family two, SF2 single family residential medium density district. Um, before I proceed with this hearing, I'll ask if any of the council members intend to disqualify voting on this case because of a conflict of interest or any bias. All right. Um, has the city clerk received any protest petitions? All right. Uh, now I'll ask the council members if they've all received their uh, copies of the draft minutes of the Planning Commission meeting for May 21st, 2019, which summarizes the hearing. We have. Yes. All right. I'll ask the uh, city zoning administrator to provide us a, a report on this case and a recommendation from the Planning Commission. The original application for this case was for single-family zoning and commercial zoning adjacent to Andover Road. In the 
public hearings at the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission was opposed to extending more commercial to property north of 21st Street, which is contrary to our comprehensive plan. So the eventual motion from the Planning Commission was to modify the application to only single family residential zoning. And the applicant agreed to that and gave the notion that in the future, if he had a commercial user, he might come back and apply for zoning adjacent to Andover Road for some potential business in the future. But ultimately, it was a unanimous vote of the Planning Commission to recommend that single family zoning. Is the applicant here this evening? I don't see anyone here from the applicant. I guess we'll um, move the discussion up here to the bench. Council, what's your, uh, what's your pleasure? Just a question. How many what? acres is that whole thing? How, how large? About 75 acres. Any other questions? Mr. Mayor, I would move to adopt the Planning Commission's recommendation for approval of zoning case Z 2019 and approve an ordinance changing the zoning district classification from the present I 1 industrial district to the mixed industrial commercial district to the B 3 retail and service business district on property generally located at 1108 North Andover Road, Andover, Kansas. I would ask you to amend that motion to item 10.1. Back on 10.1? Right. For some reason, the zoning cases are, we're doing 2019-05 now, and 04 is following it. They were backwards, so. Huh? Because of the address. Yeah, that's fine. You want to read item 10.1. Oh. Okay. Easy to do. I'll read 10.1. Adopt the Planning Commission recommendation for approval <coughs> of Zoning KZ 2019-05 and approve an ordinance changing the zoning classification from the present Agricultural District 40, Perrins Butler County, to SF2 Single Family Residential Medium Density District. Perfect. Is there a second? Uh, motion by CR, second by Greg to approve zoning case Z 2019-05 based on the findings and factors of the Andover Planning Commission as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We'll move on to item 10.2, which is also the zoning case concerning 1108 North Andover Road, zoning case 2019-04. Um, before I proceed with this hearing, I again have to ask you if any of you intend to disqualify yourselves from voting because you have a conflict of interest or bias on this case? No. Is that a big fat no? no. Okay. <laughs> Has the uh, city clerk received any protest petitions? No, we have not received them. All right. I know you've already answered this, but I'll ask you again if you receive your copies of the Planning Commission draft minutes for May 21st, 2019. Yep. Yes. I'll ask our zoning administrator to provide us a brief background report on this case and the recommendation from the Planning Commission. This case is actually a proposition to down zone the property. It's currently zoned for industry and mixed industrial commercial. Uh, the applicant desires to build a dance studio there and their proposal is for B3 retail and service business district. The Planning Commission held the public hearing on this at their May meeting and again recommended unanimously to approve the change in zoning. Questions? I've seen it. It's a beautiful building. It's going to look great right there. Right it now. is. The case has been to the site plan review committee in a preliminary fashion and we'll be back next uh, next month for final approval. It's exciting to get some activity in that area again, so. What's your pleasure, Council? Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt the Planning Commission recommendation for approval of zoning case Z-2019-04 and approve an ordinance changing the zoning district classification 
from the present I-1 industrial district and mixed industrial commercial district to B3 retail and service business district on property generally located at 1108 North Andover Road, Andover, Kansas. Second. Uh, there's a motion by Greg and a second by Mike to approve zoning case 2019-04 as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Aye. We'll move on to item number 11. 11.1. Uh, we have some amended petitions for water, sewer, and paving. Yeah. Uh, yes, Mr. You. Mayor, <coughs> as you recall, uh, we adopted the neighborhood vitalization plan uh, last year, and we were trying to target uh, what I would consider entry level housing or, you know, what is a range of 175 to 225,000, that type of housing in Andover. And uh, it was an oversight that we probably didn't uh, discuss this with the Cornerstone <coughs> development, uh, Ritchie developers in particular. And so what I'm suggesting tonight is that the council uh, approves a minute petitions where the city at large would help with the special assessments. It, it would be very difficult to go back, well, it'd be, I wouldn't wanna do it, uh, to go back and put this in the neighborhood revitalization program. But uh, the city attorney discussed with me, you know, some various options and he felt like uh, the uh, minute petition and us working with the developer on uh, paying some of the special assessments in, in conjunction with the school district as well, uh, who's signed this petition as well, uh, would be the most equitable way to solve, solve this issue. So because they're competing uh, straight up with housing that is within the neighborhood revitalization program same right. pricing right i mean that's right. essentially what that's we're doing that's here. what we're, we're trying to level back to playing field correct okay mr mayor i move to accept petitions submitted by usd 385 and ritchie development corporation for water sewer and paving for improvements to cornerstone eighth edition to the city of andover kansas and further authorize the city of Andover to reduce contra the contra contribution of Ritchie development by 30% for each designated improvement. Second. Motion by Greg, second by CR to approve the amended petitions as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> to go. Then Caroline. I would um, recommend uh, that we approve the resolution amending resolution 18-08 of the city of Andover, Kansas, authorizing water, sewer, and paving improvements in Cornerstone 8th edition to the city of Andover, Kansas. Second. Motion by Caroline, second by Troy to approve the resolution amending resolution 1808. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 11.3 is the aforementioned ordinance. Then I would recommend that we approve the ordinance amending ordinance 1664, authorizing improvements in the Cornerstone 8th edition to the city of Andover, Kansas. Second. Motion by Caroline, second by Troy, approving the ordinance amending ordinance 1664 as prescribed. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 12, Prairie Creek fourth phase. We have before us an engineering contract. We do, and I'm pinch hitting for Steve, who was pinch hitting for Rick, so let's not play stump the public works director. <laughs> 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 this contract is for all of the engineering services for the fourth phase of Prairie Creek, including the improvements to 13th Street adjacent to the subdivision. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the agreement with ba Bauman Company for Engineering Services for Prairie Creek Edition, fourth phase in, in the not to exceed amount of $155,300 and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. Second. Motion by Greg, second by Caroline to approve the engineering contract with Bauman Company as as listed. Further discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number 13, Prairie Creek fifth phase. This is the engineering contract for the fifth phase of the Prairie Creek addition for all the public improvements. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to approve the agreement with Boffman Company for engineering services for Prairie Creek addition fifth phase and the amount not to exceed $178,700 and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. Second. Motion by Tory, second by Caroline to approve the engineering contract with Boffman and Company for the fifth phase of Prairie Creek Edition as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 14, 159th Street Central to Kansas Turnpike Project. At your last meeting, you approved a contract to build water and sewer lines adjacent to 159th Street from about Central Avenue to 13th Street. This amendment to the Trans Systems contract is simply to add the construction engineering services for the water and sewer work on that project. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve Amendment K to the Trans Systems contract for the 159th Street Improvements Project, adding construction engineering services for water and sewer project to, to the scope of work. Second. Motion by Greg, second by CR to approve the Trans Systems Amendment K for the 159th Street to KTA project. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 15.1, we have a change order number four for the Yorktown Parkway improvement. This is kind of a accumulation of several different activities. The Yorktown Parkway improvements were divided into two phases from Kellogg to Douglas as one phase, from Douglas to Central as another. And then the mass grading for the phase two project from Douglas to Central was added to the school's mass grading project to get the economy of scale. And, and at your last meeting, you approved that work that was about half of the engineer's estimate. What this change order does generally is to add the erosion control items for the mass grading project to the existing contract for phase one and there is one other small change order in some uh, conduit <coughs> additions. Michael Bailey's here from Trans Systems. If you have any questions, otherwise I need to fill in that blank that was left there in the total number. That number is forty-eight thousand seventy-six dollars and nineteen cents. Is that all borne by the city of Andover? Did the entire change order? cost? No, the erosion control would be that phase two of the project, which is a 75-25 split with USD 385, 75% city. Les, I have a question. Our notes indicate that that's a 46,518. That's a, that's a typo on my part. Okay. 46,518 is that set of items that's separated out that goes to phase two okay, project. So 4807619 is a proper amount. Correct. Mr. Mayor, I would move to approve change order number four to the Yorktown Parkway Street Improvement Project contract with Corneo and Sons in the amount of $48,076.19. Second. Uh, motion by CR, second by Greg to approve change order four as presented. Further discussion? I have a quick question. Go on. Um, maybe not exactly on this, but it's uh, the corner of Douglas and where your town's going in now, where Douglas is all tore up. Do we have any idea when that'll be, when Douglas will be back? The intersection will be open when school starts session in August. Beginning of school in August. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Did we ever think about adding Douglas from Yorktown to Andover Road into this project? I know we talked about it, but perhaps some re-engineering there of that light and 
that road is probably going to be in order one of these days. We've had some discussions about the intersection at Douglas and Andover Road with the increased traffic to the school campus and, and the amphitheater po the potentially some trips from Yorktown over to Andover Road as well as some drainage that we question in that area. That's something we continue to investigate as staff and we'll probably end up hiring a consultant to help us out a little bit with uh, some potential improvements. I just hate to see Yorktown finished through there and then have to go back and tear part of it up to expand Douglas or whatever we're doing. We've had some preliminary conversations with trans systems and, and they think there there is an interim step, the potential to uh, add a phase to those traffic signals that would protect a left turn in the existing four lanes before progressing to adding a fifth lane dedicated to left turns. Mayor, I, I agree with you. That that light's already a mess now. Um, when, you, when you do set at that light, it allows about two cars to get out, and uh, then you're waiting for ne the next cycle. So um, there's, and you're right, it does flood at that, on the east side of that. So when we have any substantial water, you're going through quite a bit at that intersection. So as long as uh, we're cognizant of that and are looking at it, if there's an interim step, then I, I suppose that's fine. But um, I assume that interim's going to have to probably follow quickly on the heels of Yorktown. Okay, so we had a motion and a second. Who seconded that motion? I believe I did. Who made it? I believe I'm not sure I seconded it. <laughs> did I? You made it? You made it, I seconded it. Oh, I seconded it. Oh my God. You, you just <laughs> you're on fire. No wonder I'm getting confused. <laughs> I think I was on third. <laughs> I don't know who's on second. I don't know why. Okay, we have a motion by CR and a second by Greg to approve change order number four. Did we even vote on it? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Move on to item 16, which is marketing study for the ball field complex. Potential. So, Mr. Mayor and Council, as you'll recall, we've been doing quite a bit of surveying on recreational uh, use in the Andover area. And of the many things we found out, uh, we know we have, or, or we would project we have between two and 3,000 uh, kids playing softball and baseball in the Andover area. And that's, you know, the 700 or 750 or so that we had this year and uh, our recreation program plus the wide is another about 550 in their, their programs. And then we estimate, you know, upwards of a thousand kids are going elsewhere for softball and baseball. So we, uh, Ms. Uh, Council Member Warrington and the mayor and I met with the school district last week and what I proposed and I think the superintendent was in agreement with me is that we probably need to do some initial uh, some additional analysis of what our community can support in terms of uh, a ball field complex um, and looking at it at a, in a wider perspective such as the, the uh, people we know are leaving for West Urban and Two River softball uh, and also, also Southwest Boys Club. Additionally, we know we have quite a few people who are leaving the community to play soccer, and we'd like to look at that. I know we have uh, a, a new complex going in at Stryker over on Webb, but still overall, I think it's worth the analysis. The school district pledged last night to contribute $6,000 to this effort. It's $17,000 plus travel expenses, so I'm asking the council tonight to approve $14,000, up to $14,000 on our behalf. I'm hoping we only have to have one meeting with this group initially where they have to come and we have to cover travel costs for that. But uh, hopefully coming back to you with some names and I'd like to serve on that committee to talk about this. But overall, I think the market analysis is money well spent before we get too far down the road on this. We may just be looking at, you know, uh, some reconstruction of 13th Street Park and adding some fields. But I think it's worth our time to look at a larger uh, scale project and, and see what we can possibly afford. Mark, I agree with you. This is uh, something that's well needed for our city and the kids that, you know, 
um, play here and the ones that don't live here but live near here that uh, come to uh, uh, Andover to play uh, sports and and uh, and if we're full then we're having to you know make them go somewhere else so I, I think this is a, a good study for us to consider and and uh, for future ball fields or re redoing ball fields or um, wiping everything um, flat and starting all over or whatever whatever the study comes up to um, but uh, I have a feeling that it's going to come up to that we need to do something so was that a motion I would like it. <laughs> I have a question. Um, Caroline, did you have something? I just had a question, but if yours is a motion, I can wait. No, go ahead. Um, my question is, where are we money for this? Is it going to come out of administrative? I was just hoping it wasn't going to be a park. Out of parks. Yep, <laughs> yep. So out of parks. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the city administrator to work with the school superintendent to develop a contract with sports facility advertisory uh, ad advers ah, sorry LLC to of uh, Clearwater Florida to uh, perform a marketing feasibility study for a ball field complex in Andover Kansas and further authorize the mayor to sign an agreement between the city and the SF SFA um, for such study and author further authorize the staff to spend up to fourteen thousand dollars of the city's funds for said study. Second. Motion by Mike, second by Greg to approve the fourteen thousand dollar expenditure of city funds with the sports facility advisory as presented. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 17, the long anticipated police budget. It's finally before us. Could you bring me a pair of scissors, please? So we yes. <laughs> you got three minutes. Why are these three minutes. <laughs> I don't know if I can get it down into three, but I will tell you my original presentation was about five to six slides, and as I watched the other ones uh, and questions that were asked, this grew to about 16 slides, but I promise you I will be quick. <laughs> Uh, I will be as quick as possible right. as soon as I know how to work this. Okay, uh, one of the first things that actually Mark suggested is rather than compare our budgets with our expenditures that we break these up. So the first few slides are going to be on. I don't mean to stop you, but I'm going to. Why don't these TVs work? I think we've got uh, screens. Technical difficulties. Yeah, I think that's continues. I mean, it's on our uh, it's on our it's iPads, on our, but, uh, yeah. iPads, but yeah, it's easy. I know it's easier for you guys to look up and look at it. Um, really? Just the back ones. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Continue on, but we'll work on that. <laughs> Lost my place already. Okay. <laughs> you were at the beginning. <laughs> the, the, we're going to split up, as Mark suggested uh, previously, w to separate the expenditures from the budget our current budget and proposed budget. So these first few slides are going to be on expenditures only for the previous five years, 2014 through 2018. This first slide uh, shows our personnel expenditures for these five years. You see we had a significant increase in 2015, and that was due to the merger of the 911 budget and the police budget into one. We consolidated all of that into one. Um, and, and we also, that year in 15, we added two SROs uh, to, to our staffing. Uh, in 2017, there's a, another uh, increase. And uh, we, at that year, we, trying to read my own notes, we, we added a civilian accreditation manager uh, and we um, had some other building repairs and, and uh, uh, increases and then the, the last year in 2018 we didn't add any positions I, I think most of that increase was due to salary uh, increases um, but we didn't add any staffing the next one is contractual expenditures and again uh, the budget stayed consistently through 2017 on contractuals 
uh, in 17 we had a significant increase, but about 60,000 of that was another transfer of uh, expenses from the, this time from the IT budget. Uh, these were all communication type related contractuals that had been being paid out of IT. About 60,000 of that was transferred to this budget uh, from the IT budget. And then, um, and then in 18, we actually had a little bit of a decrease in contractual, significant decrease. Um, next one is commodity expenditures. And uh, this one has really kind of uh, gradually increased, um, but stayed fairly consistent over the last four years. In 18, we had a, a, a little bit of a jump there. I know 13, about 13,000 of that was we purchased body armor, uh, tactical body armor uh, for an active shooter type incident for our staff, uh, which would have been a significant part of, of that increase. Capital outlay, we had uh, in uh, 15, we went from replacing two vehicles a year to three vehicles a year. Um, then in 16, we had a um, increase there. That was, that included three vehicles and it also included uh, basement furniture for, for the remodeled basement for the investigation section that we did. We lost everything. And then, um, and it also included the cell phone towers that we put on the Redbud Trail, which was about 25,000, which took up most of that cap, uh, capital outlay there. The, uh, then we <coughs> reduced it in 17 back to three vehicles, and in 18 we once again replaced three vehicles, uh, but we've had a significant increase in the cost on, on the vehicles. Next slide is transfer. In uh, 14, we typically normally put about 10 to 15,000 into our transfer our equipment reserves, uh, saving it for future expenditures. In 14 and 15, we bumped those up a little bit, putting more money in there because we already knew we were planning to uh, remodel the basement in 16, which was about $90,000, and then also in 17 to replace all of our outdated body camera and vehicle cameras, which we were able to save the money ahead of time and pay for it outright. Uh, and then in 17, uh, in nine, I'm sorry, in 18, at the end of the year, we had a significant reduction in our actual expenses from our budget, and uh, we put about 90,000 into reserves for some future project yet to be identified. Um, next slide. This is the total budget, operating budget for the police f and communications 911 center. You see we have a gradual increase. Again, I will point out 2015 included uh, the merger of the 911 budget along with the police department budget into one and added two SROs. Uh, the next uh, jump, good size jump was in 17. Again, that 60,000 of that came from a transfer from IT budget to police. And, and then in the uh, next jump into 18, uh, 90,000 of that was a transfer uh, that I talked about earlier. So now we're gonna transition from what we actually spent in the five years, 14 to 18, to now this is the 2019 budget that we're currently under and what we're proposing for 2020. Uh, the top line is personnel. You see uh, an increase, increase of about 60,000, and that includes a 3% cost of living merit increase for personnel wages and one full-time employee, new employee that I will talk about here shortly. If you look down to contractuals, there's a very little increase to that. Uh, the vast majority of or all of that increase is due to an aging building that is starting to need a lot of maintenance replacement. I think this includes two new uh, HVAC rooftops. Um, so a lot of that increase is mainly due to building maintenance uh, and upkeep. The uh, commodities, virtually no increase, and then our capital outlay is a, um, a fairly large reduction um, that includes $130,000. For that $130,000, that includes three new vehicles uh, and about $10,000 for a storage shed 
uh, to be purchased and, and built for our basically storage of some of our equipment and, and evidence. So we move on to capital projects. First thing I wanted to point out, I, I need, I'm sorry, I need to back out because I forgot to talk about the full-time uh, position that we're asking for. What we're asking for in 2020 is a new full-time civilian employee that would be basically dual trained as a community service officer, which means they'll be able to handle walk-in reports, fingerprints, um, cases that come in, questions for officers. They'll also be able to handle the traffic at the window or customer uh, service, people that come in and want copies of reports. They'll also be trained as a dispatcher so that we'll have actually two dispatchers on duty. The plan to do this over, over the next few years would be to add them so that we end up having coverage of uh, around the clock. But this initial part is just, um, just to, start to, to start the program off. I, I can tell you in 2018, we had over 100 walk-in reports to the police department. We had almost as many outside arrests. I think it was 98 in, uh, where someone was arrested outside of Andover on an Andover warrant. Uh, all of that takes a report, an officer coming to the station and doing a report. We had about 50 questions for officers, people walking in just wanting to talk to an officer and ask a question. We had 211 incidents where we did fingerprints for people that came in and about 152 other services that were provided to. So all, all over, um, we had over 600 times where an officer had to be called in off the street to handle this, uh, these calls. This person, this new full-time person would be doing that obviously for about 12 hours out of the day. Uh, we wouldn't have full coverage with just one. Um, this will also, they would also be able to assist our detectives with follow-up calls. It would improve our customer service at the window. And uh, probably one of the most important things is that we would have two people there to actively dispatch uh, for any major event, large structure fire, uh, robbery, any type of ma major traffic accident, we would have two people available to be on the, on the console. Now I move to Ms. the capital projects. May I interrupt you and ask a question? Yeah, There's one thing you said that threw me off a little. Would this employee, which I think this sounds like a great idea, but would this employee be working the hours of dispatch or working police? Because you're only going to have one new employee, so there's going to be some days that don't get hit, I would imagine. Uh, you're absolutely right. We can't obviously fool. Uh, our, our police and our dispatch work the same hours, so, so 20, 24 same hours, time. seven days a week. Okay. Um, so isn't it like a 12, I mean, aren't they doing longer shifts? And the, the exact time that this person would work, we haven't defined that yet. Okay. It, it very well could be an eight-hour a day, five day a week, uh, Monday through Friday initially. The long range plan is to eventually be able to cover it 24 seven and have two people available. Um, but that would be right. several years down the road. All right, that, that clears it up for me, thank you. Um, capital, capital outlay, capital projects. First thing, if you'll notice, there's $35,000 put at the very top line there for a manpower study. Uh, that's actually been removed out of the budget. Mark and I have talked and we believe we have the funding available this year to do this. This would be a staffing study, someone from the outside coming in and looking at our, our needs, the police department and seeing if our staffing is appropriate uh, or if w they would recommend additional staffing. Uh, we, we believe we have funding available in this year's and that's something I would be bringing later this year. Obviously, if this study came back later this year and said we don't need more staffing, that full-time per person would not be included and in we wouldn't be hiring that person at the beginning of the year. If the staffing study comes back and says we need more, then we're gonna take a serious look at adding that person uh, and getting us started in there. The other two things on, on the capital projects are what I've already mentioned, the $10,000 for a storage shed for uh, extra equipment and uh, some things like recovered bicycles and things that we have to hold on to. And then the other 120 is for uh, three new vehicles. Wanted to show you a little bit about full-time employees. Um, 
you can see in the top line is our uh, sworn staff. That is our police officers. And we increased in 2015, we added two SROs. Keep in mind, 75% of that comes from the school district. So we're only paying, uh, for those two people, we're only paying a equivalent of a one half employee. Um, and then in 2016, we added the detective to where we currently have two detectives now for our department. Uh, we haven't added any sworn positions since 2016. That middle line is our communications people. And you see it's pretty flat at 6.5. It's been 6.5 since uh, the last 12 years that I've been here. We have not added any communication staff. This, this person that we're asking for in 20 will be the first one that, uh, that we've added to communications during at least the last 12 years. The very bottom line is our civilian staff on the uh, uh, police department. The, uh, we hired an administrative assistant uh, a little over eight years ago, back in 2011. And then we added a civilian accreditation manager in 2017 to handle our accreditation process. Just to show you that our staffing is not, um, things falling apart, is not out of line. I took the uh, seven of the cities that in the state that are equivalent in size to us. And you can see uh, with, with our population, these are estimated populations. Uh, based on the U.S. Census estimates, uh, we have 26 sworn officers, and you can see that's pretty consistent. Uh, there are several agencies uh, similar size, maybe a little smaller with, uh, with more officers or about the same. Through these uh, service deals, you can see our calls for service have continued to increase over the years since 2008. Slowly goes up. We had a big jump in 15, slight re uh, a good reduction in 16, and starting to go back up again in 17. Um, the, as population goes up, our calls for service are going to go up. Our arrests and incident reports. Uh, arrests, uh, again, as uh, we've kept them pretty consistent. Uh, we've kept our incident reports down uh, and, and our arrests. Basically, I, I write that off to a a low crime rate and some really great policing. Got to throw that in there. <laughs> um, last part: citations and accidents. Uh, you can see the top line is our citations that we issue. That has gone up as our population has grown, our traffic has grown, and our citations have grown. There is research that shows that as Citations increase, traffic accidents decrease, especially injury accidents. You can see our numbers are fairly low uh, for a city our size. I believe several years ago, four or five years ago, we were ranked as the second safest city in regards to traffic accidents in the state. And since that time, our, you can see our accidents have actually gone down. Um, so the, the, the officers do a great job in our traffic enforcement. Um, Last slide, we, our, serve, our department is very big on service. We're service oriented. We provide a lot of services, too many to put on one slide. This is not all the services we provide, just some of the uh, bigger ones. I wanted to point out a couple. Some of these are not common to other departments, surely not these numbers. Uh, we have a great partnership with our neighborhood associations, with officers being assigned to all the active ones in the community uh, and build that community communications between the department and the neighborhoods. Uh, we share that same program with the uh, Chamber of Commerce where we uh, have built partnerships with our businesses, our open garage door program. There's not too many departments that have that. Uh, where we continue to patrol and let people know they left their garage doors open. Our vehicle unlock service, most departments stopped that a long time ago. We still, if you're in need and you need a, your vehicle unlocked, we will do it at no charge. And our traffic safety program and our traffic safety committee, uh, as example, the last council meeting where we just won our eighth consecutive AAA award, our traffic safety committee and program is uh, unparalleled any other place in, in the state. With that, I'd be happy to answer questions. That was fast. 
in your opinion. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Questions? Well, Chief, you are our most expensive department. We're also the largest. Yes. Well, anyways, Thank onward and upward goes your budget. <laughs> so. You do a good job. Use your resources wisely. And yes, I've seen the comparisons for a number of officers, sworn officers from city to city, and we do a remarkable job with, with the staff we have. So. Thank you, sir. Any questions? No question, but just, again, every presentation from all the departments we've been receiving has really been outstanding, and this is another outstanding presentation to present us. Thank you. We will take your budget under advisement. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <coughs> all right. Um, let's move on to, um, I guess we're going to squeeze in the executive session here at this time. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I would move to uh, recess into executive session for discussion relating to the acquisition of real property pursuant to KSA 75-4319B6, session uh, to include the governing body, city administrator, city attorney, and the public works director. The, I'm going to estimate that it would be a 20-minute meeting, and we would reconvene 20 minutes from from the recess and I'll leave that up to the police force to check that out for me. <laughs> is there a second second all right motion by CR and second by Troy to go in executive session per uh, KSA 75 19 B subsession 6 uh, for the purposes of uh, discussion relating to the acquisition of real property uh, session include the governing body, city administrator, city attorney, and the public works director for approximately 20 minutes. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries.
There you are. <laughs> okay, Council, I need a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Second. Motion by Troy, second by CR to come out of executive session. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I guess we are down to member items. Caroline, would you like to start us off? Uh, I had one in mind, and now it's gone out of my mind. We can come back to you. Uh, but I would like to uh, just remind the chief to share fire, uh, police and uh, to share about the um, festival that went on. It was really great on June 1st, when it gets to be your turn. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we had great weather. Um, both uh, Caroline and CR were out there with us. We had fantastic weather. Great we music, no, no arrests, yeah. uh, a lot of activities. I believe we had some estimates. It was much more difficult to tell how many were there because it's so spread out now. Uh, we had the band at the amphitheater. There was people over the gazebo, over in front of the library where the fire department was spraying down the kids, just all over the park. But we're estimating 17, 1800, probably our largest crowd ever. Uh, great weather, great time, no complaints, no injuries, nothing. That's good. My son turned 16 yesterday, so he's driving. Wow. That's good. Yeah. Ben likes to hear that. Yes. <laughs> Wait, like what? 16 year old driver. <laughs> oh, great. There Scott. goes your stats. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, that's all. Sure. Uh, yes, uh, I want to say that the festival was wonderful well well done as usual I also want to thank everybody for your condolences for the death of my mother-in-law and uh, it was a blessing and so forth but I certainly appreciate everybody's thoughts that's all that I have and nothing Good. Mike none tonight staff have anything I just uh, want to let you know and I, I think I put a, a brief uh, memo in this that the uh, school district is asking to use the ACC they do this from time to time for a work fair in October and I just want to make sure we understand we're still giving the school district uh, no no cost and of course they're interrupting pickleball time with this but uh, I did you know periodically we do this and I just want to remind the council of that and make sure nobody <laughs> has any objections it's not they're still letting us use their uh, parking lot for uh, uh, there you go they I also mean, use their Right. I mean, auditorium. Right. Yeah, yeah, auditorium. Use a lot of stuff. stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, I understand a few of you have been having trouble with uh, email and a couple other things here recently. And I just want to make sure you know you can get with Craig and uh, sit down and try to figure out. There's there has been some changes on that. And you changed the host, to your email host. Yes. To uh, host where? There was some weird stuff going on there. He told me today when he fixed mine. Yeah. So, yes, yes. I've been missing some right. emails. Please, if you don't think you're getting stuff, please get with him and, and uh, make sure that your iPad set up correctly. And then there's one other thing. Wasn't there? Maybe not. The cornhole but tournament? Was that what it was? <laughs> yeah, I hadn't. Yeah. June 21st? That's yeah. 21st. Yeah, Friday are night. you really starting at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? It says. On a Friday? I think it's later. I think check in starts at wow. 2 they do that on a Friday? It starts they at three. I believe. Yeah, I registered. <laughs> Is that right? Corn to be wild. Corn to be wild. Yes. All right. Well, while we're at it, we just should mention our 
first concert on the 29th to right. that might be a good idea yeah um, uh, i think we're what is the it's our red dirt festival is that correct red dirt round and it. then i would let J jenny say the axe because i don't know if I, I don't know much about red dirt um we've got a couple local bands morrison county and uh, i'm gonna mess up one of them now mountain deer revival that'll be opening in the afternoon and then um, wade bowen jack ingram our pretty well-known acts but the main uh show will be pat green and that show will go, um gates will open at three and we'll start at four and it will go until 10 11 o'clock depending on how smoothly all our transitions go um earlier in the day right up until gates opening there will be a truck rally over at andover central middle um that kwls is really working hard to promote and so they're trying to promote come bring your truck out check out the other trucks and then stay for the show as well so um, kind of exciting and then in July we'll have blues and brews and August is our um, kind of alternative rock show with Eve six fuel and spin doctors that'll be our biggest show oh yeah it always is anything else happy Father's Day for all the fathers coming up Sunday this, this Sunday Okay, let's get out of here. I move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Caroline, second by Greg. Further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.